this video, we're going to look at the trigonometric functions sine, cosine, and tangent, or sin, cos, and tan. The video is called sin, cos, and tan 2 because it's the second video looking at these functions in this series. So we're just going to try and solve this problem here, this example. Find the angle alpha in this triangle. So we've got an isosceles triangle. Isosceles means that two of the sides are the same length. You can see there's two sides that are length 12 and then the base is length 10. We want to find this angle, alpha. So the very important thing to know is that currently we don't have a right angled triangle. None of the three angles in this triangle are right angles. And so far we've only seen how to use sine, cosine and tangent functions when we have a right angle triangle. So we need to somehow create a right angle triangle from this triangle and use that to find alpha. So the solution is to first, I'm going to re-sketch this triangle. So this is always a good thing to do, even if you're given a sketch of the triangle, sketch it yourself because then you can draw lines on it and draw any notation on it however you want. So you can just do this on a bit of paper, it doesn't have to be accurate, you just have to label it accurately. So I'm going to label the angle alpha and I'm going to label one of these two sides that are length 12. I'm just going to label one of them and then I'm going to draw a line down the middle of the triangle which makes a right angle with the base. So I'm just defining this line if you like. It's the line that makes a right angle with the base and starts at the corner where alpha is. So because this is an isosceles triangle, this line has essentially completely cut this triangle into two equal triangles, two new ones, both of which are right angle triangles, and it's cut the angle alpha completely in half. So essentially, if we just think about this one half, this red triangle here, it is a right angle triangle. We have one length in it, and well, at the moment we have one length in it, but we can also label another one. We can first label the angle up here is alpha over 2. The whole angle was alpha. You can see that on the left hand side. So this angle is just half of that alpha over 2. And similarly, the side of this triangle at the bottom is length 5 because the base of the original triangle was 10. So this is only half that base. So it's 5. So we're just focusing on this red triangle now. So we need to remember the way of remembering which trigonometric function we need to use. And it was this little word, if you like this little nonsense word, Sokatoa, Sokatoa. So we look at our triangle and we think, right, what two sides of the triangle are involved here? Well, 12 is the hypotenuse. It's the side opposite the right angle. So we have the hypotenuse and five is the side opposite the angle we're concerned with. So five is opposite alpha over 2. So 5 is the opposite. So we have the hypotenuse and the opposite. So that's H and O. So that means we need to use sine because we see that it's SOH. So the other two don't have O and H in them. So it's this first one so here. SOH. And that tells us that sine of theta equals opposite over hypotenuse, where theta is just whatever angle you have. Obviously, in our case, it's not labeled theta, but I just mean in general, whatever the angle is you're concerned with, sine of it equals opposite over hypotenuse. So let's go down here. In our case, we can plug in all the information we have and we get that sine of alpha over 2 is equal to 5 over 12, which tells us that sine of alpha over 2 is not 0 0.417. So I've just plugged 5 over 12 into a calculator. Now we want to get alpha by itself here, right? So we look at the original problem. We're trying to find alpha. So we need to get the sine to the other side of the equation. So to do that, we take inverse sine of both sides, which looks like this. So the opposite, if you like, of sine is inverse sine, which we write as sine to the minus one. It means the inverse function. So if that's all confusing, don't worry too much about it. Just remember that whenever you want to take sine, cos, or tan to the other side of an equation, you just change them to the inverse, where you write sine to the minus 1 or cos or tan to the minus 1. And on any calculator, on any scientific calculator, there'll be a button for inverse sine. It's usually the same button as sine, but you have to press shift, and then you get inverse sine. 
So we can find inverse sine of 0.417 and it is roughly 24.645. So alpha over 2 equals 24.645. So we just take the 2 to the other side and we get alpha equals 49.291. So there we have used trigonometry to find this angle alpha in our isosceles triangle. Mm -hmm.